to see Rissendels in the new year. It's 2020 and I hope you all are having a great new year so far. How wonderful we finally got snow. It's awesome. And when you get snow, you get to see there's all this other life out there that is doing its own stuff that we're just not aware of most of the time because we don't see it because it's not active when we're active. So I love it when there's snow because suddenly the world seems a bit more crowded. So we came out today to the Grove and found all these different animal tracks and we thought we'd check them out to see what was going on. I love to do tracking because I love to see who's out here and what they're doing. And tracking is as much an art form as it is a science. Um, you have to be creative in the way you're thinking, as well as knowing some of the background about these animals and the tracks that they make. So we're gonna try to decipher a few of the tracks that are out here, try to figure out who the animals are and what they're doing. And what kind of tools might we use? There's wonderful books. There's a nice simple book um, that is Tracks and Scats, or Scats and Tracks of the Midwest. It's a whole series. You can get the one for your region. Um, this is pretty awesome. It comes with a ruler on the back. It's got the uh, animal drawings of the animal tracks. It shows you the base, a lot of the basic patterns that they use. And it also will draw a little picture of what their poops or scats look like. So this is an awesome book to use, nice and pocket sized. And then there's other tools that's always good to bring along to measure your tracks. You can get yourself something fancy like this tracking ruler, which splits apart and is very awesome. But you know, if you don't want to spend the money on that, if you've got an old carpenter's ruler, that'll work well too. And if you haven't got that, two paint sticks and a wing nut and a marker, and you can make your own. Awesome tools, um, and it's something for everybody's budget. So let's take a look at what we've got here. So this set of tracks that we see right here, they're fairly good size. Um, I can put my foot in the picture because you can see how big I am. So here's my foot. It's a fairly good size. So we know it's not a little mouse and we know it's not um, a rabbit. Uh, we look at these tracks and you might think dog that comes to your mind and you would be right. These are in the dog family. And as we look at these tracks, something to really look for to tell you that it's a dog. If you look inside a, one of these tracks, can you see this, this raised X right there? In your canine tracks, you're going to have this X. And X marks the spot, and spot's a good name for a dog, so that's my good way of numbering, memorizing that this is from a canine. You can see the claw marks in the front here, so this indicates the animal is going this way. So we think about what animals we have here that are dogs. People bring their dogs out to see Rissendel, so this could be somebody's pet dog. We also have coyotes. Uh, quite a lot of coyotes here. Um, and it's possible we could have foxes, although I've seen very little evidence of foxes here. Uh, and usually where coyotes move in, foxes tend to move out. So we've got three possibilities, rover, coyote, or fox. Looking at the size, it's definitely not fox. The foot, are the toes are kind of spread out, so that would suggest to me it's probably somebody's pet dog. But I don't know that for sure. Coyotes tend to keep their toes tucked in a bit more. Um, but we're going to keep going and see what else we can find. So this animal came along here. It stopped here. So its track comes here. It stopped. Well, it didn't even stop. It just sort of planted its feet and turned. Um, what I was looking for was to see if maybe it had peed on something here. Um, but I don't see the right foot pattern for that. And we don't see any yellow snow. Let's keep going. So it came along here trotting. Oh, we got a couple of gallops here. So it's trotting and then it goes into a bit of a gallop. And there's a slight incline here or maybe it decided to change its speed, but its gait changed a bit here. And it came around this little culvert, checked things out and then kept going across the grove here. Let's follow it. Here's a really good example of that X. That's a really nice one there. Looks like we have a rabbit crossing our trail here. Okay, and it started from back that direction. 
And when a rabbit is going, we've got the two small front feet and then the two large back feet, kind of like it's playing leapfrog. So those front feet land and make a mark, and then the back feet swing past and land in front. So you get the two little front feet, and then you get the two big back feet as it's going this way. And this one came here, here, gathered itself together, hopped up here, then jumped off the log, and continued that direction. And let's keep following our possible coyote. It's coming through the grove here. Now, if you look at the trail, it's a pretty nice straight trail. That tells me it's doing, it's either walking or trotting. Um, and it's probably trotting because between here and here, if the animal was walking, that would be the distance between the shoulder and the hip. And if this was a coyote, that would be a really long coyote. Here in the Midwest, our coyotes are not quite that long. So if it's trotting, this distance will be one to three times this length. And so that's what I'm seeing here. It's a bit longer than this length. So it's trotting along here. Hind feet are landing where the front feet were. So each one of these tracks is actually two footprints, which can make it kind of hard to tell them apart. And they form a nice straight line because um, he's just going that way to get there, not really looking for anything. Let's see what he finds. Oh, right here, his gait changes again. Here's the trot, and suddenly it changes. And we've got this bit of a curve here, which suggests he might be going to turn, but he's not turning. And he changes his gait again, and changes it again, and then back into a walk, or a slow trot right here. Picks up speed a little bit, and then heads down into the woods. As we can see, there is a ton of activity here. And a good question would be why? Well, we've got some logs, we've got things hiding under the logs, like this mouse. There's a bunch of mouse tracks right here. We've got, well, these could be squirrel, they could be rabbits. Um, I'd have to measure and, and look up the measurements. Um, there's a good chance that this is either one, because we're gonna have trees here for the squirrels to climb. We have some big squirrels here, like the fox squirrel. We have some small rabbits. The cottontail rabbit is kind of small. Um, so these could be either. I'd have to do some measurements on them. The, we've got some on top of the log here. That suggests squirrels to me, because squirrels will run down logs. I don't know if rabbits actually run down logs. I've never seen one run down a log. Let's see, what else do we have? This guy's going this way, and this is smaller, so I'm thinking this is probably squirrel. And here comes our canine again. And they hop up on the stepping stone. And then our canine steps here, and then up here on this stepping stone. And then it starts to get confusing. He's definitely up here and continues going that way. And I'm not about to walk through questionable ice <laughs> <laughs> to see what happens that direction. But it's pretty wet here. There's a lot of protection, a lot of cover here. You get little, you got your mice, you got probably little birds hopping around in this area. You've got your squirrels, you've got rabbits, you've got your coyotes. Um, pretty good place to be an animal. Um, and if I had better shoes on, I'd go and check that out as well and see, uh, what was going on that direction. Winter is so awesome. There is so much happening out here. These are the stories that the snow will tell us. And I think it's just an amazing thing to be able to see who's sharing our world with us and what stories they can tell us. So if you wanna learn more about tracking, we've got some tracking workshops coming up for older kids as well as for younger kids and families. And perhaps you can come out and join us and see if uh, 
you can learn how to judge, to figure out what some of these animals are doing. And if you can't join us, you can always show us your pictures, bring us your stories, and we'll help to interpret what you've got happening around your house as well. See you later.